Welcome to The Rec Room with Mandy and Mio, a podcast about books and the people who write them. And then, and then when I went home and we watched Winter Soldier, that was great. That was so good. And then I woke up this morning and I was like, what did I do? <laughs> like, I, I was like, what, what was that happened? fever last dream? Night? Yeah, I was like, what the? And I was looking through Twitter and I was like, oh, I know what this is. Oh, I watched it already. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Ma- Max, you should know there was something weird we spotted last night when we were watching oh, yeah. Falcon and the Winter and, Soldier. And here's a, this is not really a spoiler. Or is it? But like, okay. I, who's mm-hmm. to say? Who's Mia's really to voice. say? Because. It was so labo. And the fact that Mio was like half dead. I was the one who spotted we, it. Yeah, I was like really yeah, he was half dead. dead. And we decided to watch we decided to watch through the credits of the first episode of Tifaus because it was so nice. Like it was it was such a nice mm-hmm. like edit. And then at one point Mio was just like, Whoa, what the fuck? Did you see that? And then Besides, it was a really weird phrase. Wait, yeah, yeah. So, so it was <laughs> in a it very was, it was in the credits. Yeah, I'll say it. It was in the credits. Mm-hmm. And then, like, um, it was showing, like, different, like, supposedly, like, mission images. Like, so, like, pictures of Sebastian Stan, mm-hmm. picture of... of, mm-hmm. of um, Anthony Mackie. Yeah, Anthony Mackie. And then, <laughs> I was about to call him Anthony Wilson. Whoops. Um, but then, <laughs> <laughs> like... Um, <laughs> But then, like, he just puts him and Sam together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, ah. <laughs> no. But then, but then, one of the things that came out. So they were showing like different images, also of the locations. And then one yeah. of the pictures, and some of it was like graffiti. Graffiti, yeah. also. Like that was the concept. It's like headlines, and then like graffiti and mission okay. reports. Okay. Yeah. Right yeah. So very. Yeah, it was basically like, very stuff. homeland. But like, yes, actually. Okay. <laughs> but like one of the images that came out, like, really stood out to me because it was like a picture of like a real, like a developed city skyline, <laughs> as in like skyscrapers and they were all like oh, different oh, architectural mm-hmm. shapes but so oh, it really felt like wow and there was like an ocean or like a yeah it was like a seaside sea, city right? yeah or mm-hmm. a bayside city if you will <laughs> now, <laughs> now, now, here's, now here's the thing i noticed that really threw me off was that it looked like a postcard because there were words that were printed on the top of the image image and okay. the, the words read and i quote Isang mundo, isang tao. And I'm like, wait a minute. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, Mandy. Yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> and literally, we pa- like, he was like, no, we gotta go back. So we paused it, and then both of us were like, what the fuck? This city isn't even but yeah, relatively... Exactly. When you this look, is not when you a see Philippine the image, city. I'm gonna see if I can send you the image. But like, it's not even my I wanna see this. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send it from our like, chat with Ate, but then... At best, here, I will show at you. At best, yeah. it's like okay. look at our group chat. Singapore here, here, here. or something. Yeah, yeah. It looks like Singapore. The fuck? Yet, yeah. Yeah, the <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> Do you see what Lava. I'm seeing? Do you see? Am I crazy here? I'm, I feel like I'm this taking crazy. This is so funny. And I literally <laughs> stared at that phrase for like a minute. I was like, "Fuck, is this supposed to be? look?" Oh my god, Mio in the side, Meron pa. It's a some tao. Yeah, like it's like, like a passport you, sticker thing. It's really yeah. Or, I just it. it's, on the or it's like one side. of the graphic ads Who's that you see say? when you arrive at the airport, and it's In like the airport, welcome right? to Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like or like the yung, yung uh, what's our tagline now for our country? Who's to say? Uh, who's, who's to at uh, this for, <laughs> this economy? Yeah, at this point, who's to say? <laughs> no, but yeah, I get you. It's like the oh. <laughs> We don't know. So yeah, and I haven't, I haven't checked back in the other visuals if it says the same thing in other Uh languages. Yeah, but I don't know who's saying. Yeah, anyway, weird, a weird thing to put. I know, and part Uh, of me is very weird thing to put. Wave, but uh, we'll see. Maybe this wave can show up. We'll we'll, uh, see in the next five weeks. Um, what's going to happen? But the thing that we don't have to wait for. Is our mini series on Zadie Smith because we are hey, in oh our final God. episode today. <laughs> <laughs> that was so- hey. hey, he's so welcome. smooth. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> Look everyone. At this guy. <laughs> what a guy, this guy. <laughs> so, welcome everyone. This is a podcast called The Rec Room with Bandy and Mew, where we ask the question: When does a writer's work become required reading? In each episode, we take popular authors of the day and review each entry in their bibliographies just to see how close these writers get to the sweet spot between mainstream breakout success and traditional literary sensibility. 
My name's Mia. I'm Mandy. And as you have heard, we Sorry. have a special guest on this episode. She is the creative director at Homeroom Co-op, a Manila-based creative cooperative that does everything from branding to content creation to writing scripts for Anne Curtis Dog. That's right. Our you guest her. also does freelance design, illustration, and collage work. Most importantly, we cannot forget this. We cannot stress this enough. She is the mother of Tembo. That's right. The light mother of her Tembo. life. The cause of all her sugat. That's true. Please give a warm round of applause to our guests at home. I, I hope all of you are applauding at home. For our guests, Mags Acampo. Welcome, Mags! Woo! Welcome to our group! Hello! Hi. Hello! Mags, uh, we we have been so excited for this episode. Like we've been like planning this months in advance oh my God. because once we decided um, that we were gonna do Zadie Smith uh, for this podcast, we knew that we needed to get in touch with you. You were like the first person that we were like, oh, okay, it's true. We were like, we need to have Mags specifically as a guest. And then later we're like, oh yeah, and the uh, jam too. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> I mean, he has a tattoo uh, from one of the books. Yeah, but, no, no, but see, which, we didn't even. But sure, that we heard the episode. Yeah. We found out on the spot. Yeah. We so. found out during recording <laughs> that that <laughs> tattoo was from on beauty. Um, but but we have known about your love for Sadie Smith for so long, and it felt like. It felt like it was closing the circle in a good way to have you on our last episode for this mini series, uh, just so we could kind of like look back and um, see what we've done. <laughs> yes, <laughs> or wow. See, see what, see what Miss Zadie has done, really. Uh, why don't? Uh, could you tell us like what was your first encounter of Zadie Smith's work? How did you like start? What What was the first book of hers that you read, and when did you read it? Um, the first book that I got from Zadie was on beauty, actually. Um, I stumbled upon it at like a book sale yeah. in Ateneo when I was in like either second or third year. I don't remember. Um, but I'm going to be real with you. I bought it not knowing who she was as a writer. Yeah. Um, I bought it because the cover was really nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Which was the cover? It, it had this... It, it was this um, hot pink cover with like super wow. intricate um, custom typography oh. so I, I'm one of those people who very sadly does choose books based on their covers so yeah so so I read it and then I loved it and then well Anna it it, it it was all downhill from there. Like every time I'd see her name, I would just be like, "Oh, I need to buy this. Yeah, I need yeah. to read it." But but your uh, I would say also like your expertise or at least your your experience of oh my god of yeah we're like really fully looking at you. As don't don't call expert. it don't call it expertise. Oh my god! I mean like compared, don't. Compared I feel to like <laughs> God. This is what I get. This is what I get for posting the books I read. Yeah. I th- yeah. People just think I read Honestly. a lot. I don't. No, but that, that, I wish I did, but I don't. That extends also, I guess, to we her. We don't either, and that's like, why we yeah. have this podcast. Like, we really wanted to, like, go to you for, I guess, guidance on oh this. Oh, my God. Because, like... No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Because, like, like we, we came to this with, like, zero context. We were just like, yeah, we know that uh-huh. she's one of the living legends now. And that's that's as much as we knew. Like we didn't know what White Teeth was gonna be about. We didn't know what Autograph mm-hmm. Man was gonna mm-hmm. be about. But we just knew that you and Jam and a few other of our friends liked it. And and we also knew that you had engaged as well, like in her nonfiction work. So like she's sort of been a presence that's been around for you even until now. In my regret. yeah, no, I, I feel like such a dork. Um, I. I like listening to her interviews. I yeah. look for podcast yeah. episodes with her. I'm obsessive in that way. I fixate sometimes when I like things. And I think yeah. I like Zadie a bit too much. Like, I, I feel like sometimes I'm too forgiving with her work, even when it's uh, okay. Lang. Oh, but, interesting. Yeah, I, well, what, are, what are the qualities that you say endear you to her work in particular compared to other authors of the day? Um, I just really think she has such a distinct voice um mm. 
I feel like every time I read her books, even if, you know, they're fictional, um, there's I feel like I get some insight at the end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes cause you read things and okay, it's a fun story, or okay, it's a sad story, or you know, you read an essay and you learn a few things, but you don't really get insight. Don't get a peek into like how another person really thinks. Right. Um, yeah. And I think I get that a lot from from her books, both fiction and nonfiction. So I'm really into that. Also, she's just so good with words. Yes. Like her <laughs> rhythm is insane. Oh yes. Like, it, it's yeah. just so fun to read how she writes. Yeah, that was definitely something we encountered. I think in especially like NW, where you really see that mm. multiplicity of voices coming yes. through and all of them felt distinct yeah, yeah. all of them felt like mm-hmm. unique perspectives so absolutely um it's also interesting that you were saying that earlier that you felt that you were also forgiving of her work because when we were pitching the idea of doing grand union with you oh god <laughs> i mean we're gonna we're gonna get to it now you were all, you were also yeah. let, you also told Ooh. us that this was the book that you felt did not quite hit the spot for you yeah, um, it's it's not bad. I'm gonna mm-hmm. preface it with that. It's not bad. It's just that um, I didn't appreciate it as much as her full length novels. Right. Like, yeah. I, I'm not sure what I was expecting from you know a collection of short stories from her. This being her first, but it just uh, mm, I, I, mm, yeah, it felt <laughs> uneven. Yeah. I guess it's the best way to say it. Like yeah, some yeah. stories in here are so good, but some of them are also just like. Mm, no. Yeah, that, that's super fair. I, I remember I was reading, I was looking for reviews on this book online, and then mm-hmm. one of the reviews was saying, like, these stories, uh, th- this writing is what Zadie Smith will be known for. And I was like, are you sure? I mean, no, compared to her novels, are like, you I didn't like... feel like... <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, oh my god, if I were her, I'd be so offended. Yeah, yeah. Known for that some... like weird. yeah that, <laughs> that too. Like, mm. uh, well, I mean, can you just go back to how White Teeth was published straight out of college? Yeah. Like. That was insane, by the way. And it sparked, like, critical like, discourse and discussion. Exactly. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't know this no, and that, it's. Uh, uh, this person white? This person? I just want to possibly. Yeah. I know. I was gonna say this person was probably white. Uh, yeah. White. yeah. But um, this book uh was <laughs> a very recent. It came out recently in 2019. Uh, as mm. recent, yeah, even though that that year now feels like a distant memory. In God. Yeah, our, I was like, when was yeah. that? <laughs> 2019. Uh, it was her first collection. A decade ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was her first collection of stories, as you mentioned. But these are stories that collect um, some of the stories that she had previously published already mm-hmm. in The New Yorker, The Paris Review, and Granta. And I'm just going to run through the stories that um, she got published in each. So the New Yorker stories were Meet the President, Escape from New York, The Streets Are Numbered, Two Men Arrive in a Village, uh, The Lazy River, and Now More Than Ever. In Granta, the story that appeared there was Just Right. And Paris Review got Miss Adele among the corsets, amidst sorry, amidst the corsets, and Big Week. Uh, not included in this collection, however, were uh, other stories that Zadie had published elsewhere, like uh, The Embassy of Cambodia, which was published as an ebook by Penguin, about a migrant African domestic helper in Willisden, Willisden, who notices that badminton <laughs> is being played at the embassy of her on her relatively affluent street. And then there are other stories like The Girl with Bangs, Hanwell Sr., which appeared in The Book of Other People, Permission to Enter, and The Waiter's Wife. Uh, I, I felt like this is interesting to note because normally, like when you think about short story collections, like there mm-hmm. are some writers who re- do their short story collections first. Um, and they really write uh, like their whole set of stories for the book rather than mm-hmm. collecting stories that they've published over the years. And I think what happens here uh, is is sort of the reverse, which is uh, like for authors who've already established themselves, it's the thing that it's the book that they release while we're all waiting for the next novel to come out. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, yeah, you've published some stories over the years. Maybe uh-huh. you have some other stories like in in the back burner. Maybe we can put them together mm-hmm. and then we'll see what happens. Um, which, which is, I think the, that's the impression that I get reading this book is that a lot of these stories mm-hmm. were 
I mean, apart from the ones that were published, the ones that were not published, they were the stories that felt like, uh, not quite there yet, almost there. Or mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. this is introducing the semblance of a, what would be like a really memorable story, but it, it's missing something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it also yeah, does I completely agree. the thing that I feel is... It, it, it's sort of the thing that I've noticed as I was reading, as I've been reading Zadie's books throughout the series, that I've, I've found it hard to like shake off. Which are there are times where she kind of jumps ahead of the reader, and and not that she is like trying to make jumps or shortcuts in logic, but there are things where she makes assumptions about the reader that if you can see them like you can tell like oh i'm not meant to be the intended reader of this story does that i don't know if that (laughs) makes sense but like there are some stories where i was like reading and i was like uh 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 i don't know the context of this Uh, like oh this yeah mm -hmm. like this feels like very rooted to like brexit sentiment you know which is not uh Mm -hmm. i mean like which is not to say that it's necessarily that's what necessarily makes it bad but it makes me feel like a certain sense of distance from the story as I'm reading it. Yeah, I, right. I get what you mean. Like, in the end, it just becomes, like, a nicely written piece of whatever, but you, you can't really relate to it. You don't yeah. really understand it. Yeah, Like, you're left kind of yeah. wondering, what did I just read? It, it sounded nice, but what yeah. was it? Yeah, and, and it, yeah. It, it's kind of like short, like, shorter... Um, Autograph Mans, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that was like a difficult thing we experienced with Autograph sense. Man. Uh, where, like, the first part, it was so hard to yeah. retain information because it was like, wait, I don't know how these things yeah. are connecting with each and other. And then so much happened pa. So, that, yeah, that felt like the difficult thing. About... And then even when they did eventually connect, that's you were like kind the of one like... I haven't read, so. Oh, oh okay. Well, yeah, it, we can yeah, tell you now. It's, it's like, it's fine. You're fine. <laughs> There, there yeah, are some nice moments, fine. It's but fine. like... I know, I know. Yeah, but then sana... Uh, maybe now, looking back, I'm like, maybe that should have been like cut down so aggressively and made into a short story and then put in this. Yeah. I I, I mean, that makes me wonder... Maybe it would have worked then. I don't know. It, it's, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I think she needs a better editor. Right, okay, that's literally <laughs> what I was thinking as well. Because... <laughs> The yeah. work is good, hey, but someone <laughs> needs to like need fucking rein editor. her in sometimes. Yeah, yeah. which you yeah. know, I mean, like, it's not me, but she needs like, someone. It's clear more yeah. than ever in in this <laughs> it collection. It can't be us because when you get to like stories it's like not us. <laughs> let me think. Like I'm trying to remember. There was a story called Parents Morning Epiphany, which was like presented in the form of like a writing worksheet and like. Like, it doesn't really tell you anything about, like, who the parents are or who the kids are. Or, or at least, like, to me, the, the, that context seemed really obscure to the form in which the story mm-hmm. was presenting itself. And so that, I could not, I could barely register anything that was going on in that story. Yeah. So I felt really lost there. Did you guys feel that in any other of the stories? Uh, um, I feel like... Yes. A lot. <laughs> yeah, and a yeah. lot of the stories. It just feels like she was experimenting yeah. a lot with form and with genre. And I I don't know. I guess it also stems from the fact that when I picked this up, I was expecting very real action, which is what she does. Yeah. Um, I guess I was thrown off by by experiments, which aren't... It, it's not bad to lay around with form and genre and whatever. I mean, some, some writers do that really well in small collections as well. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah. I don't think it worked out here, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. With that being said, like, I think we can move on to talking about the stories that we each pick from this collection that we want to highlight. Because, um, at least like, with the novels, like we could talk about them as a uh, as like a whole um, cohesive mm-hmm. piece, but then the collections are a little harder to pin down, and we can only really pick at strands of themes that overarc throughout the whole collection. Uh, and at least for the stories that we pick, they were stories that I mean, I, I I'm, I'm presuming that uh, highlighted. Not only those thematic strands, but also the thematic strengths of the book. Uh, so we're mm. this is gonna be our attempt to like you know say what we like at least about this book. But in 
<laughs> okay. So do you want? There's like nervous go? laughter everywhere. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're like, <laughs> okay. Um, uh-huh. I I noticed also, by the way, that all the stories that we chose were in the back half of the book. They were almost all yeah. next I know. to each other. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I but think mine is directly right after yours. Right. Romeo. Yeah, and then like uh, like ours are separated from Mags by like one story. But they're all in yeah, the back half. All... Where I really feel like she feels she she's like more grounded at least in like mm-hmm. relaying those ideas and in, in the front half, which yeah, that's that's the tricky part. Um but the story that I picked uh was entitled The Canker. And it's a story about... It, it's sort of presented as a kind of fable about uh, women who live on this island. And they live in a tribe where... It's a matriarchal tribe. Uh, and they're living in the shadow of this ruler who has been chosen by the people on the mainland called the Usurper. And the, the woman's name is Esoric. And it sort of shows like what her role is like in the island society. Like she salts fish, she's a teacher, but she's also a storyteller. And like it's supposedly the way it's like relayed is that the storyteller part of her is the part that she embodies the most. Like that's the part of her that um, she feels the role she has in her community. And the general idea, I think, in that story is it's a story about how stories in themselves are not very neutral. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not just the stories that we actively tell, but the stories that we get from others, even if they're not explicitly engaged in the act of storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. And yes. The way, I don't know, like, did you guys feel that also? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. but yeah. Sorry, I, I thought you were going to say something, Mandy. So no, I, I also I thought you were going to say something. No, <laughs> oh. I, I feel like this story, among especially like we were saying earlier, na between the three stories that we decided to cover today, yeah. this is the most like um, uh, fantastic. Yeah. You know, not like, oh, mm-hmm. that's fantastic, but like fantastical. Right. Because it's... it's, Yes. um, I mean, I do think it's good. I liked it. And it was such a different pace, especially since the two stories before it are so, like, heavy. Yeah. And, And, like, um... Yeah. And then Big Lie is this, and it's it's quite concise as well. Like, it's... I guess it's... I think it's less than 10, like, 10 pages. It should be. And, um... And I I like that it was a good break. And before going right into like for the king, which could have been connected to any of the other stories that came before the canker in the in the selection, um, uh, but yes, yeah, this story. No, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, this story feels uh, like. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Could you, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry, man. <laughs> No, no, no! It's fine. I'm like, I'm like, it's fine. I'm like, <laughs> like geez, sorry, oh sorry. man. <laughs> No, I was just gonna say that I get what Mandy means with how it was a nice break um in yeah. between that that stretch of stories. But at the same time, um I, I feel like the intentions of that story were really good. Um yeah. I liked oh, yeah. the ideas she had, but oh my god, I I wanted to like that story so bad and I didn't. I just ah, yeah, okay. I didn't. Well, I don't Yeah, what was the thing that was like getting what were what were the thing that you what was the thing you were looking for as you were reading that story? The thing is that um I don't think that her strong suit is world building. Yeah, I, I don't okay. know if that's yeah. fair oh, to say, yeah, but yeah, I yeah, just yeah. don't feel like I, yes. I I wasn't convinced. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, I don't know because this is a this isn't the only story that she sets in a fantastical environment. There's a, mm. a story earlier on um, entitled Let me look for it. Uh, Meet the president. Which mm-hmm. feels like it's very firmly rooted in the future, but there are social political uh, relationships or structures that feel important to the world, but she doesn't really like elaborate them clearly. Mm-hmm. And so it feels like yeah. I don't know what the power dynamic is supposed to be between this boy who's engaged in the AR simulation and why he's here in the village. Or, yeah. you know, what's his relationship now to the girl, even if they've just met? Uh-oh. 
Oh, oh. Yeah. I feel like with things like this, it, it probably would make more sense for her to make the stories a bit longer. Right. Just because, yeah. yun nga, I, I feel like we're not getting uh, enough yeah. information yeah. on why yeah. we should be caring at all. Yeah. yeah. So I, well, I mean, that was also the, the other thing that was like getting to me with this story that I had to like read multiple times to see if I could find was that it, she, I mean, like, with in terms of the language, mm-hmm. like, there were assumptions that you could make about the power dynamics between the societies depicted in the mm-hmm. story. But yeah. then it's not, it's sometimes vague or unclear mm-hmm. if your assumption is necessarily correct. Yeah. Like, yeah. when, like, the thing that I found the hardest... Like, it was very passing? Yeah, like, the thing I found hardest to work through was that when she was describing... When the story was describing um, the nature of the usurper at the beginning of the story, I immediately assumed, like, oh, okay, it's it's the ruler of the mainland society. Like, he's, like, the evil mm-hmm. king. Mm-hmm. And then, later on, there's a, a sentence that kind of gives away the way the usurper came into power which is apparently the usurper was chosen by a misguided group of people yeah but then it's it it almost became a tricky wording of the phrase because earlier in the same sentence she had referred it to the people on the island so then it made it sound almost like the people on the island had chosen the usurper but then to oh, rule over the mainland. Right. So I was like, not right. sure. I was like, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, where, yeah. where is the usurper yeah. based? Where is yeah, the usurper yeah, yeah. from? So who, <laughs> who is he ruling? Yeah. Who, and, and like, I, who I, are I, his constituents? Yeah, exactly. drop, drop his location pin. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so I, I really had to like come to like, I had to make a decision on my own where I said, okay, I think <laughs> he must be the dictatorial ruler of the mainland. And so the people on this island see themselves as diametrically opposed to uh, to the usurper. But again, like I, that's my assumption yeah. coming from the start, which is like mm. that helps you a yeah. bit. But like w- you know, when you're trying to share the story with other people, you don't know if your yeah. assumptions will be the same as theirs. Right. Um, but what I think. Mm. Okay, sorry. Yeah, go. go I was sorry. just gonna say, na parang going back to what Max was saying, na. Baha, it would have been better if this and Meet the President were a bit longer or if yeah. there was a better editor to like flesh out the ideas. Is that, it yeah. sometimes like I did like the canker better than Meet the President. Yeah. Um but like both mm-hmm. still kind of felt like writing exercises. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. not yeah. necessarily a good way. Parang Completely pang, agree. Pang, yeah. pang seat work. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, binigyan siya ng prompt. <laughs> oh, yeah. and then it's they were like, like write it in five pages, and then yeah. you're done. And yeah. then, but then that's and then that's what you do for the whole period. Like, it's not even a homework; mm. it's a seat work. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, I I will say the thing that I do feel like at least was fleshed out in terms of like deeper thematic strands. And I was like saying this earlier was that it feels like it's a story about stories, and mm. I think specific mm, yeah. to Zadie as the writer of the story, it might be her doing an exercise in reexamining her role as a writer in mm. the most bare bones way possible, like strip strip away context of West and East and yeah. like just try to represent like a society in wherein there is a storyteller, somebody who has the role mm-hmm. of like upholding the values or passing on the traditions from one generation to another. And then they're confronted with the shadow of someone who appears to be a bully. Although like that, that was another thing that I wasn't sure about. Like the usurper, as far as we can tell, only does like one like explicitly bad thing. In mm-hmm. the story, but then the rest of the things that we hear about the usurper are are stories related to the people in the society. Yeah. Right? So yeah. like that yeah. So I, I feel like what she's trying to get at with the with the canker is that she has to be she's trying to be wary about her role as a storyteller. 
I'm like repeating mm-hmm. myself because like I'm also trying to like go on the bare bones path. <laughs> no, it's all right. But, like, <laughs> like this is also like, like figuring it's it out a, in real time. It's I a feel like perpetual you're really processing. Through it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like I, I feel like because <laughs> wait, okay, I'm really gonna figure this out in real time. <laughs> I got this. I got this. We guys. support you. I got this. I'm really just listening because we're I'm listening. Like, like trying to okay. also because see the where crucial, we can... no, yeah, and uh, like turning point of the story is that you know they've they antagonized the usurper for so long that at some point Esoric, the the storyteller, she makes mm-hmm. this decision to look into the usurper's mind, which is a very like again, very as you were saying, like this is a very vague way of describing what she's doing. Like yeah, that really came out of nowhere. Yeah, like it, 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 it's described as like a power, the power that they suppress in yeah. their community um, in order to develop their other gifts. But like that just like begs more questions. And then if yeah. you take mm-hmm. it at face value, it's like okay, so supposedly she saw into the usurper's mind, and what she saw was ugly and abominable and it confirmed all her like suspicions but then the rest of the community goes on to look into the usurper's mind as well and they're like less um so the word that she uses is circumspect than esoric so they start uh-huh. spreading the stories about the vulgarity of the usurper and this ends up transforming the society in a way that they start performing vulgar acts as well. Like, they start telling dirty jokes or singing songs about destroying the usurper. Mm-hmm. And then they start hunting animals, which they had never done before. And a specific animal that they identified as the symbol of the usurper. I mean, like, that... that I think there was hearts. They, they, they started hunting hearts. And, I mean, the hearts didn't do anything to them, except that they were unlucky yeah. enough to be the animals chosen as the, the symbol of the mm. usurper, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. Esoric starts distancing herself from her society, where she's like, ah, oh, this isn't really what I, the you know, the society that I grew up in, like, yeah. it, it, it kind of sucks now. <laughs> but yeah. then she also starts reassessing, but like, what did I do to add to that? And then she realizes that when she was like, carrying out her role as a storyteller in the community, uh, the way that she had contributed to it was um, giving in to the impulse of telling stories that were only half truths or stories mm-hmm. that were not like fully true, if only to ferment a hatred for the usurper. So, like the specific mm-hmm. story that she encourages is that um, there is a, a group of people that they were trading with, and the story that she ended up telling to the children was like oh, you know, the reason that those people don't trade with us anymore is that they died because they were supposed to... They were caught in a storm. They are boat people. And their boats um, sank because they were caught in a storm. And guess who didn't allow them to dock for the night? That's right, the usurper, <laughs> that bad guy. The usurper. And they were like, yeah, we got to kill the usurper one day. And that's sort of how she realizes, like, yeah, so maybe God. I did have, like, some role <laughs> where... It's her being like, mm, maybe. this is my role. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where she, you know, like, it it was Esoric no longer trying to exercise her role as a storyteller in order to defend or uphold the things that she loves, but to destroy the thing that she hates. You know what I mean? Like before the usurper came yes. along, like she she was her role in the society was like primarily oriented to the safety and the growth mm. of her community. And then by the end of the story, yeah. her purpose like, like, is oriented literally... to antagonizing a group of others. Yeah. Which, you know, for all intents yeah. and purposes, they could be bad guys. And I mean like I'm not trying yeah. to like also like be a centrist here, but then like like she like th- this is both sides. it felt like it felt like that was the the thing that she was very, being very cautious about um as the storyteller of this story <laughs> is that she's trying to look at it from but what will this um way of telling stories of of talking about others do to me as a as a person 
mm-hmm. um, which you know may not even really be right. her fault as the storyteller because this is something that could be the implicit effect of mm-hmm. um, the usurper's shadow falling over the island. So, like, if 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 I, I was like island, thinking yeah. about it like in a present day analog, you know, it's like sort of when you are against someone clearly because you despise their ideals like let's say in the if you're looking at the elections like you'll vote for whoever is not that guy even if the guy you end up voting for has like equally despicable ideals though your only like motivation mm-hmm. for yeah like the lesser evil yeah you, yeah yeah you only end up voting for the lesser evil yeah. because you don't want the greater evil not because you want to uphold the society or you want to build it into something more progressive or build mm-hmm, it yeah. into something that you actually believe in. Yeah. Um, and that, I think, is part of the strength overall that you see in these back half of stories is that in a weird way, mm-hmm. the back half stories, especially the ones that are oriented in the idea of what stories we tell ourselves and what stories are told to us, mm-hmm. it's it's really laying out her philosophy of storytelling. And how mm-hmm. storytelling right. in itself is never going to be a purely neutral act. It's always going yeah. to orient itself towards a certain set of values or certain beliefs, which you may or may not agree with. But, you know, that's that's the role that's given to the storytellers. You know, they have to um, be the one to put that forward mm-hmm. to the reader. Uh I don't know if you guys saw this, but somebody had posted on Twitter like an excerpt of an interview that she was giving, or it might, might have been a talk, mm-hmm. where she was saying that she believed, like Zadie Smith was saying that the, she believes that the role of stories is to allow the reader to imagine that things could be otherwise. Mm-hmm. I don't know oh, if you guys saw that, but like that's very nice. Like you know, where it, it, I, I like that though. Yeah, it's 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 the thing where. Right now, the world we live in, without stories, we're preconditioned to think that everything we're suffering through now is yeah. like is a natural, and it's something yeah. that's part of the world. It's part and parcel of the world that we were born into, and oh, what stories are just able, have to deal with it, right? And what stories are able to do is allow us to realize, like, oh, actually, I can now yeah. imagine that I don't have to be suffering through this throughout my life, yeah. or like. You know, there is a way or that could it, it could inspire you to like make that happen for yourself and yeah. your community, or like even for myself, like as a writer, as I was reading the story, it led me to like wonder, well, okay, I, I've always looked at myself as a protagonist for myself, but what are the mm-hmm. small ways in which I've accidentally contributed or unconsciously contributed to Absolutely. the cycles of violence that we live in through today? Uh, yeah, even mm-hmm. however small they might be. Yeah, so that's sort of absolutely. what spoke to me in this story, as vague as the world building was. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and I think okay. that, that's the thing that sort of kicked me off also to being like, okay, so in these back half stories, I should be conscious to what she might be saying about the act of storytelling. Mm-hmm. And in fact, like as we're moving to the stories that you guys are going to discuss, I think those that thread is still there. Like, it's still consistent. Like, you can see mm, yeah. that question of the stories we tell ourselves and the stories that we are told and the stories that we tell others. Those are yeah. all visible in the stories that you guys chose. That's actually, that's so true. I think for, well, mine especially, or I don't know. Yeah, do you want to you wanna go? Should we go into is this your a segue? Now? Yeah, I think nice. we're segueing out <laughs> to your story. Ooh, nice. smooth. <laughs> So tell us, tell us what you picked, Mandy, and what's it all tell, about. Tell us, should I tell you our findings? Yes. Um, so I picked, <laughs> I picked um, for the king. Mm-hmm. I was about to say I picked for the king by Zadie Smith. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> um, so this is basically a story about two friends catching up um, in Paris. So one of them, V, lives in Paris, and then his friend is the narrator. Yeah. Who is never named, right? But I mean, then they kind of we might as well that call her, her yeah. I because she says, uh, "All right, I. all, all, all I right, the <laughs> I. All right, I was about to say there's okay. 
Oh, like the okay. Anyway, oh, sorry. Because you... <laughs> well, there's a part where where they talk about how like someone always gets their names wrong, right? And then yeah. like yeah. They, and then her name starts with an A, but they always ask how to pronounce it. But oh, and so yes. it it's very clear that these two characters are supposed to be. POC, but you're. I mean, I think mm-hmm. it's safe to assume that they're supposed to be black. And well, um, one of them is Asian. He is Asian. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm so he sorry. He is Asian. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, girl. I'm racist. Okay. I didn't read this. Well, guys, it's been a long <laughs> week. Um, <laughs> All right. See you guys next week. It's been nice day. Anyway, yeah. Thank you, guys. This is a good one. Um, sorry, you're right. V is Asian. Yeah, V is Asian. And you know what? I think they're one of the reasons why I didn't want to think that, or like, I kept. Forgetting that V is Asian is because I didn't want to imagine him as V from BTS. Uh, anyway, oh, so he's so hot. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> this is a reference he's that also, is uh, oh, not no. available um, to me. It's okay. That's you're fine. Well, now in he my head, you so well. super confirmed it. He's yeah. V from BTS. Yeah, and has a husband. I guess so. so congrats to all armies oh. listening. <laughs> Wow, you're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> Me just saying the word army, we you're gonna the die. just got cancelled. <laughs> you're gonna get like a million views. But I hate views. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry for dragging you both into this. Um, anyway, sorry. So, so they hang out. And basically them catching up about their life and they always and this is um presumably something that is quite routine for them even if they live in different cities. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. um uh it's literally just you know what this is? What I kept thinking is that this is a literal conversation with a friend. Yeah. <laughs> and the way that yeah. it was written yeah. out kind of did remind me a bit of Sally because of uh, how V talks, especially. I yeah, think. yeah. Like, V kind of reminded me of um, Bobby from Conversations with Friends. Yeah. Because he was very, like, you need to... You because need to relax. Most of the con- yeah, most of the conversation was him <laughs> being, like, Ganito ka as a person, and honestly, it's what's holding you back. Right. And then the narrator just being like, "Whatever, like you're so funny." But in her head, it's like he's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it was a very it's it's a very elaborate and lengthy conversation, um, re- recounting of a conversation with a friend, um, and her reflecting on how that affects her or like how she would see herself later on. Yeah, but then eventually, so there are also segments of the story where she admits to herself that whenever she catches up with V, no matter how much she um, like values his opinions about her and also how much she trusts him, there is always something that she'll hold back from him. Right, like she'll mm-hmm. never make cuento to him about um, like genuine romantic connections she has with somebody because she feels like. V judges her in some way or like feels mm-hmm. hurt for some that she would have a genuine connection with someone else despite him being one gay and two married so I don't know <laughs> what that's supposed yeah. to be about and then uh, later on when they're walking home from their dinner despite her like sorry if you can hear the sirens no no okay okay it's the despite, world we live in despite, Despite her being, uh, them both being kind of like hit, they were like drunk and walking home. She knew mm-hmm. that she wanted to tell this specific story of that happened while she was on the way to Paris from Strasbourg, I think. Yes, and mm-hmm. um, and and she kept trying to find a way to insert it, but then there was another part of her that was like having a hard time doing it. Because she was like, oh, it's not relevant. And yun nga. So, like, that kind of goes back to what V was saying is that her expectation or, like, her conceptions of, like, time is holding her back from saying mm-hmm. something that she finds relevant, I guess. Um, and then it's not. And then she, they eventually say goodbye and she feels happy until she, like, remembers the story that she wanted to tell V, which is basically that uh, on the train ride to Paris, she met. Not met, sorry, that she was sitting by uh, two people and one of them was a man who had Tourette's mm-hmm. and he kept saying in mm-hmm. French, 
um, for the king, for the king. And there was a woman with him who was older, who she assumed was his um, mother. Yeah. And who mm-hmm. was just basically consoling, not really consoling, but like just sitting there with him patiently and not try to, not not telling him to stop saying it, but was basically like, yes, you're right for the king. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. which was like, honestly, in the whole story, despite it kind of essentially starting out to be about friendship, that section was like the softest part. Yeah, mm-hmm. of the whole thing. Like reading through that story, it was very aggressive. I think because it was her being making cuento so hard about her night with her friend, and then bigla when she's alone, she gets like very sobered, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. even as a drunk. And she's like, "Oh, that happened, and I don't know why that affected me so much." Um, and actually, I want I want to know what you guys think that meant for her because I actually didn't really get. As much like parang I it like I don't get why it affected her so much that she wanted to tell V about it, but then obviously her you know own internal issues like made mm-hmm. her not tell him about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How did you guys find this story? That's essentially the story, by the way, to everyone listening. Like, there's yeah. not a lot mm-hmm. to it, but um, yeah, I liked it. I did like it, even though uh, uh-huh. I I I will admit that there is parts of it that I. Did did not understand. I mean, like especially the ending. I didn't understand why it was like that. Yeah. And then also, I was mm-hmm. telling Mio that one of the reasons why I chose this is because I s- like this a little less than my other choices. Okay. And also, as we've seen in yeah. the past, like three episodes of Zadie Smith, yeah. I ended up liking um a book I didn't initially like. Her one of her works that I didn't initially <laughs> like after talking about it. Yeah, so, yeah. For me, it's like okay, I, I feel like I should like this, um, but I don't know why. So yeah, you guys, what did you think about mm-hmm. this story? Well, I I really like the story yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, I okay. think one of Zadie's strengths and we see this even in her longer novels is that she's really good with being able to describe how real friendship works but it's yes. not always like heartwarming and soft but there's like this there, there, yes. the connection the way she describes it it's yeah. so accurate it's it's weird yeah. um yeah the conversations yeah. were so good but Correct. to your point that that last bit um i think that she was getting at there was uh, i mean i think she was going back to the narrator's um, fixation with time yes. and with the role of women and mm-hmm. how yes, yes. Um, you know their, their bodies are so time bound because she, at some oh, point in conversation right. she That's was right. talking about how um, one of her friends yeah. was saying uh, that you know a mother is a timepiece for a child yeah. and that really bothered her yes but yeah I think it, it just really went back to that which again is something right, right, right. she wasn't very comfortable talking to V about because he's very like you know loosen up yeah. have fun yeah and, yeah and to that point I think it's interesting that like this story is almost telling itself in reverse where it gives mm. us the effect mm. which is their conversation about aging and about time and then at the yeah. very end of the story is that's when we learn what the cause was we, we learn that that the narrator was preoccupied this whole time with what she had seen on the train and thinking yeah, about I... the man with Tourette's who was about the same age as her, and then looking her. at the woman who was older, who she exchanged eye contact with, and then she felt like some weird connection mm-hmm, where yeah. she felt like she could understand what was going on yeah. in the woman, but then she was also in yeah, awe yeah, of yeah. it. So right. I, I thought that was like... That a, bit was also interesting. It. I like how she put it, parang when she made eye contact with the m- supposed mother... Parang mm-hmm. her face wasn't like hia. like she was Uh-oh. not embarrassed. She wasn't uh, apologetic. She was kind of just like, "This is my life." Yeah, this is yeah, where I'm at. yeah. Like she was very neutral yeah. about it. Like, yes, I don't accept it. I don't um, like despise I'm what I'm going through. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, but I'm dealing with it because right, it's very clear. But then, like, despite her neutrality, it was very evident that she has affection for the. Her companion, yeah. So, para uh-huh. like it, she, it. I don't think there was any moment where probably the narrator felt like that woman was stressed out because yeah. she clearly was not. Um, Do you guys feel like thanks. this story was like trying to hit on the distance that was between? I mean, like obviously, like it's something that's hit upon that that they see that the narrator and V see each other sporadically and they catch up. Mm-hmm. But then, even while they're catching up, there is sort of this distance that's uncrossable mm-hmm. between them. 
Yes. Um, that yeah. that V seems like comfortable overstepping because like you know he's so like lax and he's always like just chill it's okay you don't have to worry yeah. about it. But mm-hmm, like yeah. V is unable to like cross the distance on her own. You mean the narrator? I oh, sorry, is yeah, the narrator is unable yeah. to cross the distance and say yeah. and like agree with him yeah. easily. And I wonder if that's. Like, despite him being gay, mm-hmm. I'm going to... Uh, this is wrong for me to assume that he's, like, cis. Because he's still male. Mm-hmm. Like, we're they're, not you know, sure, when, but yeah. yeah. that's not, that's okay. not explicitly said. Because, I mean, like, well, I don't know. Because there were parts where, like, when she would talk about, like, the motherhood stuff and, like, the... Mm. Right, yeah, yeah. Femality. <laughs> the femality of femality. it all. Femality. Uh, the femality. <laughs> the rigory. The frippery. <laughs> 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 when she would you know discuss all the the like all those women issues and stuff yeah it, he wouldn't necessarily be um what do you call that like uh what's the word for it it starts with a d like he it's not that he was like disagreeing with her naman yeah but like it's also you could tell that he was so disconnected from it, right yeah and yeah. that's also why he could be like he could just easily be like ano, ano ba? yeah like, yeah just that's don't what, think that's about yeah. that and that, that's what made me think as well that I mean again making that assumption as you did that that he was mm-hmm. probably cis because there is a part of me that's like he doesn't seem to register what she's registering especially mm-hmm. as she's giving the reasons like yes. what Mags is saying earlier or sorry what what Mandy is saying earlier about the time piece of women and mothers like being like looked at as a time piece um yeah. That Max was saying that. Not sorry, me. Max was saying you? it. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all okay. We're, it's fine. We're fine. We're alive. It's but like, all right. Uh, but I like, don't get mad when people get my name wrong. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> which is a section of this story. Yeah, exactly. Very on yeah. <laughs> on form. But right. like, um, I, but like, uh, that's the immediate rebuttal that V had for that point was like, well, look at this list of women who. Yeah. Clearly prove what right. what you were saying is wrong. Yeah, and then that's so weird because it's like that doesn't mean that it's not any less of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think also like the only parts that they significantly like get to really, I feel like what this is, it's like this is a great example of a really good friend you have that it's okay mm-hmm. that you don't see each other often because there are truly things that yeah, you can't they're, they're like low maintenance say to each other right. yeah you know. yeah e- yeah low maintenance friend na parang keri lang um but you also would never say anything deeper to and cuz and you're at, and obviously cuz she attempted to do so and he yeah basically mm-hmm. you know didn't uh respond to it well and yun nga, she never talks about her connections with dudes so far. I mean, like with I'm not gonna mention dudes. Uh, her her genuine romantic connections, and then that thing with the Tourette's guy. So, um, I feel like it's it's really like okay, I want to hang out with him and have fun and like let loose, but um, they're not like friends who talk on the not, like best friends. I wouldn't say that maybe they consider each other best friends. I think the only part then where they really super connect or like can really make jokes about is. You know the poc ness of it all. Yeah. Um, like when they take that selfie, there's a part like towards the end where they t- mm-hmm. take a selfie together, and both of them are shocked that they look older. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then he basically says, "Well, at least we're not white." <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> true. He knows that if they were white, they would have looked really much, much yeah. older. Um. So that that, I, that I get thing that. about the selfie, like I remember being struck by that also because. Like mm-hmm. that's closely followed with the incident about the bikes that they noticed, the public bikes where people just leave them around after they're done. Like I'm oh, not yeah, this yeah. bike. Yeah, I yeah. Need it anymore. Um and you know, them sort of seeing it as like this new but alien thing. Mm-hmm. And that also like it dawned on me then that that was also another distance. Like if earlier their conversation was revealing the distance between men and women, um mm-hmm. this one is also now showing the distance between one generation and another and i think right. there was a part where she was saying like you know the younger people who look at us now they must think that our categories the categories with which we name ourselves are strange 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but and then that's immediately followed by the bike thing, and so she's like, yeah. "But I also think that they're strange in their own way. Like, this this <laughs> yeah. is not something I could have ever imagined in my time." Yeah, yeah. I think about that. A lot. Like we talk about that. Me and Mio mm-hmm. actually talk about that a lot. Like, mm-hmm. parang, um, on I'm just gonna mention this real quick, but like on Stan Twitter. Sometimes I feel very, uh-huh. very old <laughs> because of <laughs> all the children that are on Twitter these days. If you are 16 and on Twitter, please reconsider. Because oh my god, it's it's <laughs> very stressful, and because they, f- I, I really feel like even if we were also on on the internet at at 16, it was very different. Um, it was very like different than how they do it now, and um, I think we touched on. This I mean, we could log off. off so. Yeah, we could. Yeah, There's yeah, that. we could log off. And also, remember when there was a time where you could only use the internet for a specific. Um, yeah, yeah. You had like load. <laughs> you had to load it up. <laughs> um, so there's yeah. that, and and you know sometimes when you look at younger kids. Who like for example, Mio has students who don't even know who Michelle Branch yeah, is. Yeah, did I tell that story and, on the podcast? Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, like we we I think we have. Okay. And and we know people who I know people who have never heard of uh, the the dial up sound of the internet. Right. Yeah. From way mm-hmm. back when. Yeah. So that's parents, insane. To that me. section. I know, and so that section actually, you're right, Mio. That sh- that part struck me because it was it took selfies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they had adapted to the concept of selfies, but then right after that, they were kind of just like. And what the hell are these kids doing now? Yeah. <laughs> they probably think we look so old. That's the thing that linked this story with the other story that you were considering. Uh, the, the story, mood. the other story you're considering was mood, because yeah. that mm-hmm. story was also very. Which I barely remember now. That one, I what I remember about that story is it was very consciously about technology nostalgia. Yeah. And about mm, like yeah. like kids in our generation kind of being like right. maybe I should open a Tumblr again, which we've done. Right. Like, mm-hmm. we, which <laughs> like, which happened? Yeah. Which literally happened to Mio recently? Yeah, it's like, he, oh wow! And he was like, yeah, yeah he was like, hey, I'm gonna there. restart my Tumblr, and I was like, okay. And for me, man, <laughs> I really was. I mean, as we've talked about on the podcast, and I have on other platforms, I was such a Tumblr person back in the day, mm, and same. now I kind of go on it just to i don't know download nice wallpaper like people are still good on it though like there's so many <laughs> really high quality content but it but yeah. it's truly not the same and i don't know if it's because i've aged and, <laughs> or and, we've aged and even then like the um, character in mood the one who the i forget the, her name but the the philosophy student who's like trying to get back on tumblr she ends up getting fascinated yeah. uh-huh. with her neighbor for whom she dog sits who was like uh this mainstay yeah, yeah. in the punk scene back in the 70s like she had met, she sounded so cool. Right. Yeah, she had met Debbie Harry, <laughs> yeah. she met the Ramones, and like yeah, they were always yeah, yeah. together. So there they was were like, always hanging out in New York, and she would like, like the philosophy student would end up taking pictures of the punk mainstay's apartment for her Tumblr, and being like, "Wow, she feels like a different world for me. It's so fascinating." And, and that that <laughs> right. felt like a common thread also going back here to for the king. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. it's like. Now yeah. the distance between us, even with the new technology that we have that ostensibly allows us to be connected, just makes us more conscious of how distant we really are. <laughs> yes, actually, that's very true. And yeah. also, like, parang, oh, I don't know. This is actually not really much to the story anymore. Go ahead. Now yeah. I'm just talking about the, the, Go ahead. the, the, the nostalgia thing. <laughs> like, um, you know, I, I, I feel like sometimes I feel like technology makes us age more yeah because, again because like mm-hmm. the more these children are on twitter the more i'm like oh i don't want to be here right now yeah yeah <laughs> or like and even then sometimes like okay we always joke about like how mio doesn't know a lot of like internet I really things. Don't. like he recently mm-hmm. like he didn't know how to share things on stories until last year guys yeah like, oh, that wow. was the one who yeah. exactly and so um but then, like at the same time, for me, when I'm on on Twitter and a, a meme pops up, I'm like, I've never heard this phrase in my life. like yeah. a text meme. I'm like, I've never heard this <laughs> phrase in my life. What the hell is this supposed to mean? And um, and those things go by so fast, and you're now you're just like, oh man. And then I guess maybe okay, in a way to tie it back to the story, I as mm-hmm. a I kind of relate to the narrator in the sense that i also have like such a strong affinity for 
time like time makes me mm-hmm. emotional mm-hmm. like all my mm-hmm. ships in my fandoms are people who have like <laughs> been together for hundreds of years yeah yeah <laughs> or in some way or form <laughs> or like even when i think about like all my friendships if i know that we've been friends for longer than like three years that makes me really emotional like last year <laughs> mia was like can you imagine we've known each other for almost 10 years and that made me almost cry because <laughs> i was like that's a whole person um, yeah. <laughs> so and i get that that sometimes then that that like thinking about those things can really hold you back and mm-hmm. make you um, not like reach your potential because you're so nostalgic for um, a, a certain premise or like a certain um, aspect of time, yeah, or years. And mm-hmm. but then you know, I look at Twitter and I'm just like, yeah, okay, I don't need <laughs> anything new. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay with staying no, relatively but, old. But on that note of like it holding you back, I think. Also within the story, Zadie made a good point where she's like, but can the narrator actually help it? If, right. you know, a right. woman's body is so closely tied to time, more than a man's, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, kaya nga, also, even in that scooter scene, parang she's more cognizant of the fact that all of this is strange and new and it's going to be old mm-hmm. soon versus V, who's kind of just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. You know? Right. Because he has more, like, space to... Yeah. Right. To be so whatever, wala lang about things because he is male. Yeah. The, yes. The, the, yeah. There, there were lines that I I highlighted because I felt like mm-hmm. it was so it was sort of the narrator getting na at her conclusion, given all those things that we've said, where she was saying so much of life mm-hmm. is structurally invisible and has no way of fitting into the external yeah. accounts of our lives. Our lives are so different on the inside. Yeah. We can never express their full particularity and strangeness in public, their inner chaos and complexity. There are always so many things it proves impossible to say. So, like, coming out of that, it's that preoccupation of time and, like, especially being, like, trying to reconcile these things with the female body, It it's mm-hmm. sort of her trying to figure out like can i ever really express myself as a human being the way i want to when things keep changing when i keep changing mm-hmm. when the world around me keeps changing and when the people who Go i am yeah connecting change. with or trying to connect with <laughs> change as well mm-hmm. and in a way that that's sort of what makes like right. these lacks ness about ness. it so alarming yeah. also it's like how are you not worried about whether or not people can understand you. Yeah. Mm. To which yeah. to which he says, you know, I suppose and living pe- sorry. Uh I I'll just uh, I suppose living peacefully in a society no, means understanding that the things that others care mm-hmm. about might mean nothing to you and vice versa. Right. But then I find it interesting then like about V is that despite his lackness or maybe because of it. He's been married to his husband for like 20 years, right? Yeah, but they're in like an open Something. relationship. Yeah. But now they're in an open relationship. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Now they are. Right, so then... Uh-oh. Okay. I don't know how to uh, verbalize the thoughts I'm having right now, so I'm just gonna mull it over. But then like... <laughs> okay, yes. Um. So generally, we like this story? I think so. I do, I, yeah. I, I think I wanna yeah. try yeah. tying in also the that last incident about the the man with the rats because i think uh-huh. given with everything that they've discussed in the story about wondering how much you can connect with another person or how much you can express mm-hmm. of yourself to another person it, it's very interesting to look at that incident on the train in light of their conversation or the things that they mm-hmm. conclude yeah. upon because then she's the way she starts describing the man with the Tourette's and the woman that she s- makes eye contact with I mean except for the part with the Tourette's like a lot of the things that she says about them are assumptions like she yes. she says that the man looks to be her age but that really right. says more about her making that assumption than the man himself yeah. And then the next thing that she says is that she presumes the woman to be his mother because mother. she is about 20 years or so older than him. Mm-hmm. But we never actually confirm with the people themselves that that's their relationship. Mm-hmm. And especially yeah. like earlier on in the story, there was that implication about 
um, they were referring to Freud when they were saying part of the purpose that we get into relationships mm, is that yeah. we try to reenact the relationships we had with our parents. Uh, but except right. now we have to exercise more control of them and try to reshape them to our liking. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, there's something about that I, I think touches on the relationship between the man and the woman that she sees on the train. Uh, not to uh-huh. say that, ne- ne- that she's necessarily wrong about the woman being his mother, but she was fascinated by the way she treated that man as he kept screaming for the king, for the king uh, on mm-hmm. the train, where, as you were saying earlier, like, she accept she no, it's not really acceptance but it's not really a je- rejection either it's sort of mm-hmm. she looks at it as this is my life and i'm going to respond to him not as if i'm mm-hmm. like automatically responding to uh, a stimulus but as an empathetic mm-hmm. human being you know yes. like that's i think that those okay. are like somewhere in the last lines of the story yeah, yeah it's the last line yeah yeah and she's unable to relate this to v because she doesn't, uh-huh. she's afraid of V seeing her as an egomaniac. Mm-hmm. But really, this story is in its own way kind of a response to the last thing that they talk about about uh, about um, V has says something about like you know are you you know is it practical to like wear a sandwich board at all times saying mm-hmm. that I'm Chinese that I'm gay that I'm in an yeah. open relationship. All mm-hmm. these like things about myself, and yet there will be so many other things that I'll have to fit about myself on that sandwich board that mm-hmm. can't be expressed. And I think that yeah. when she finds herself like thinking about back to that incident, she's like thinking about how can I frame it now as the argument that will register to V and maybe convince him about the thing that I'm worried about. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's what I Absolutely. felt. I, I have like I a small take on that last part also, okay. and I'm not sure if it's a reach or if it's dumb, hmm. but I think what's also <laughs> interesting is that, that, I mean, you feel free to cut it out if it's dumb, but no, parang, uh, <laughs> no don't say no, just do it. Anyway, um, feeling ko kasi, uh, that last part, I mean, if you take away the turrets and, and you just focus on this guy who, keeps kind of just like blurting out these words and a woman who doesn't fully understand it but accepts it anyway. It kind of also feels like sort of a reflection of her friendship with V oh, in a sense yeah. that parang they don't oh. really understand each other all the time but she's gonna be there yeah. until the end and she kind of knows yeah. that. Yeah. Like she's not... Oh, that's they're not so gonna nice. Not no, we're keeping there. this. this is we're smart. keeping this 100%. Oh, okay. also oh my god, I'm not dumb. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. She says also earlier, right? But she says also earlier, like, um, right? the reason that V is so, like, he's a bit of a Lothario is that he's, like, he said that the definition mm-hmm. of a gay man is somebody who is uh, mothered for life or or has or has been mothered yes. for life. Oh, overly mothered, mothered. Yeah, yeah. overly mothered. Yeah. Overly mothered. Yeah, overly mothered. Yeah, that's not, what it is. That yeah. really links it together. Uh, yeah, like, I just, Max, I, I, come I, on. I also kind of feel like, no, okay, this is also coming from a place where I feel like that's how most of my very close relationships with gay men mm-hmm. happen to be. It's like we don't always right. see at the eye or we don't always understand fully yeah. what the other one is saying, yeah. the lived experience of the other person. Yeah. But it's kind of like uh, I'm, yeah. I'm here and I'm going to keep listening and I'm going to keep trying to, to comfort you even if I don't exactly know where you're coming from. Yeah. Right, right. So, yon. Yeah. The story is good. Yeah. It, oh. Here we go again. It's good. <laughs> oh, Excuse nice. Me. It's good. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> Fuck. I really like that. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, it just shall... makes me want to be friends oh, sorry, with her. Go. You know. Yeah. yeah I, I'm just saying. You mean? Like, yeah, because it it feels yeah. like she's so good with carrying conversation. Yes. Yeah. Well, Honestly, I mean, okay. That's me in general. Like, I want to talk about like musicals with her that's what all i think about mm. like i'm always just like oh i want to know what songs you like also i want to know what she sounds like singing oh, like, so, oh my god me too because she has I such a about. nice yeah. voice yeah so are yeah. we uh, applying to nyu <laughs> like, i guess we are. are i guess, I guess. see you next I sem guess. nyu <laughs> <laughs> 
We gotta know. Oh my god. So sorry, can I bring up one last point go, 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 about go. the story? Go, go, go. You may, you uh, it, may. It's, it is a conspiracy on my behalf yeah. that I feel like this is, this might have been like a real thing that she went through. Like she probably yeah. has a friend. I, I would like, yeah. I, th- I think it's likely. her. Yeah. Basically, I think the narrator is her and there are a lot of oh, like, this is um, little path. allusions to her, yeah. to her own identity. Life. And, like there's the mm-hmm. age gap of the parents of yeah, the narrator. Yeah, there's yeah. the constant yeah. obsession with time, which she tends to talk yeah. a lot yeah, about does, yeah, in her yeah. interviews. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, you know, being half Jamaican, half British. I just feel like so far, this is the character I've seen the most of yeah. her in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. wala lang. Do you, do you feel like, cause what, what then separates, like, what's the thing that draws the line between this being considered nonfiction? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe part of it were, I mean, fabricated, I'm sure. It's mm. parts of the conversation. Yeah. yeah. But, Probably. I don't know. And maybe the last bit, who's to say? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I, I guess that speaks also to the subtlety of her skill, at least in writing this story, mm-hmm. where it's then hard for us to figure out, like, where, where are the seams? What are the incidents that she stitched together from things that probably mm-hmm. happened to her happened to her in real mm-hmm. life and things that mm-hmm. she's fabricating and it's like oh this is hard to tell but oh. it's very cohesive. Yeah, I feel a segue. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, oh, here we uh, go. What, oh, that's so oh, cool. Wait, uh, hey. hey. Oh. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us uh, what you found, man? <laughs> <What's> he- <laughs> what are your findings? Why don't you tell wow. us your findings? Well, 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 speaking of mixing fiction with <laughs> historical facts, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> the story I chose is um, called Kelso Deconstructed, and it's a short story based on the real-life murder of Kelso Cochrane. So yeah. um, his death sparked um, a lot of ire in, in the community um, and kind of served as the catalyst for a lot of... Um, Talk about race. So yeah. mm-hmm. I'm going to read me a synopsis of this because I didn't hear a summary of the story. Okay. Um, and I, I feel like a lot of it because it's just small details that kind of build up to the main event but aren't mm-hmm. really super important to the plot. But basically, it's about a narrator reflecting upon the narrative impact of a working class man with a broken thumb on the last day of his life. So basically, it follows this dude who has a broken thumb um, who is kind of hanging out with the love of his life, Olivia, mm-hmm. who is a Jamaican immigrant. Um, and parang they keep, the, the story keeps alluding to how this is the last day of his life, but you're not sure why. Like, you don't even yeah. know if the thumb is connected yeah. to it or not. And then, yeah. you know, the whole later time on, I thought it was the thumb. You, thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and then later on, you realize, um, you think, oh, it was racism it, based on a real life thing. I, yeah. yeah, I guess it yeah, wasn't. Racism uh, was the cause of death. I guess it wasn't <laughs> Chekhov's thumb. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, no, but, okay. I just want to say why I picked the story. Uh, um, yes, and it's really because I mean. I liked it. Yeah. And part of why I liked it was because even if it was a heavy story by the end, um, the framing at the start was so cheeky and light. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you felt that. Like, there was just, um, the way she set the mood for the story, it was very playful and very well. Okay. Okay. This is cute. They're a cute couple yeah, yeah. trying to make ends meet. And then suddenly, there's this very sharp turn in, in terms of tone and in pace, where all of a sudden it, it becomes a heavy and very serious story. And I don't know, I liked how she made that work. Yeah. Um, it it didn't feel forced, which I think is great. <laughs> yes, yeah. I agree. It's very good segue. <laughs> Check out. Um, <laughs> like it was very, uh, it was a really good build up. I think I I mm. enjoyed. Parang, uh, this is one of those stories that I could see very clearly as a nice, like, short film or something. Mm, I yeah. Don't know. I think this is the best story in the book. I don't know about you guys. Oh, okay. This is my favorite story. You know what? Story. Yes. It's... I'm gonna say yes. 
I'm gonna say it's maybe in my top this three, and I would say yeah because it's, it's and then their top three is this are all our picks. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, 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 but I say that because like this story is the one that I think most successfully blends together her experiment with form, yeah, uh, her political insight, social political yeah. insight mm-hmm. with with narrative. Like, yeah. yes. like, this is the one where she's so explicit about the narrative devices that are running through mm-hmm. the story to the point, like, yeah, as you mentioned, at the start of the story, the, one of the first things she tells us about Kelso is, like, yeah, he's gonna die at the end of the story. Um, mm-hmm. And even as I was reading it, like, I, I didn't know at the time, like, as I was starting, like, oh, this is a real life thing. But then towards yeah. the end, I was like, oh, okay, no, actually, this might have happened. This is very specific. But yeah. then... Mm-hmm. um it's more successful than other stories where she tries to do something meta textually mm-hmm. and is like very explicit about it. Like the story that precedes this in the book is two men arrive in a village. And I, mm. that was one of the stories that I honestly kind of hated <laughs> because, oh yeah. my God, because that was the though. story where she kept like stopping to be like two men arrive in a village. Well, usually they're two men, but then like sometimes they could be like this and that. And it felt like get to Uh-oh. the point. Like, I, yeah, you know, like, like what are you fucking stick, doing? Yeah, pick like, a lane. If you, <laughs> If you even <laughs> skim through, I'm skimming through the pages right now. Yeah. There are so mm-hmm. many M dashes. Like yeah. every, <laughs> like if you were to I, just I love me it, an like, M dash, yeah. but me girl. too. But it's also like girl, but girl, chill, chill. We got it. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go on. Yeah. yeah, and and so like with with the way that she's using the ner- narrative devices to point to the fact that this is a story. This is a story. This is a story. Yeah, like it, yeah. it almost like made me like worried. Like, where is she gonna go with this? And then by the mm-hmm. end, she like ties it all together, like so beautifully. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, it's so good. Using again the yeah. same devices that she had introduced in the start, like, uh, mm-hmm. like the fact that the Marxists um, newspaper headline reads like all all the world is text. All the world is text. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. And, oh my god. And then yeah. like how that echoes with earlier on. Like the things, the other lines of text that they would see around the world were not, you would presume, not actually what what were what was spelled out. I think like the yeah. most explicit one is like when they're on the tube. The signs. Yeah, and then they she, mm-hmm. she like I think Livy is looking at the Piccadilly line stops, mm-hmm. and yeah. the stops have been replaced with the names of authors. Yeah, and then like earlier before that, there's the bit where they're at the speaker's corner. And yeah. one of the the French poet who's speaking at the time, at some point he starts reciting the elements of the murder that are actually about to happen by yeah. the end of the story. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So she she's using those devices like very consciously to point to the fact like you're reading a story. Yeah. 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 Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Also, I was looking for the other one about words, but there's also a bit where she, Olivia, is like sewing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, she was doing embroidery, and then the embroidery is words are to be taken seriously. I try to take yeah. seriously acts of language. Words set things in motion. I've seen them doing it, and then she gets in it because she misspelled seriously. <laughs> 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 yeah, but see, that um, like that's a perfect demonstration of what she had just said because then that is oh, yeah. a response from us like, ah, oh, you know, see, yeah. she spelled it wrong. Like, <laughs> it's okay, it happens. Yeah, right. Oh my god, it happens. And this was also such a casual domestic moment that you're kind of like, it makes you be like, okay, this is gonna make his death even more sad because they're yeah, so, yeah, like. That's what I kept thinking. Like I was like, oh, they're so into each other, and they're clearly ready to get married, and like they're good Uh-oh. with the uh. in-laws and stuff like that. And then I was like, that's what's gonna make this hurt. I was in my head. I was like, okay, when he dies, that's gonna be the painful part. And then it's like, oh no, it's a uh, systemic nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Domesticity can <laughs> wait. <laughs> the the one that. Oh my god! Can I just share yeah. one of? Oh sorry. no! Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, no. Sorry. No, I just wanted to share my favorite small bit of foreshadowing in yeah. the story. Because, I mean, there's a lot, right? Yeah. But there's one yes. part where Livy basically asks, um, so how's your thumb? Is it still in pain? And all she wants to do is, like, go home, right? Because yeah. oh, they're still out. 
know, um, and he's like, oh, go. it's murder. Uh, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Back in it. Again, again, going back to what I was saying then, is that when I read that section, I was like, oh, cute. Because he's trying to make a joke and they're so yeah. yeah. I was like, oh. And, and then, then if later, you read you it, out, it is yeah. murder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And exactly going back to us being like, oh, we all thought it was going to be the thumb. No, it's murder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that speaks to our, I guess, like our general, like, outsider status from Mm -hmm. this event which like i'm sure there must have been people who like read this thinking like yep we know this where we know exactly where this is going like we know it's gonna end with a murder it's not gonna it's not gonna be the thumb (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and i wonder how different it the story is for those so i think this one of the who knew who kelso was Mm -hmm. before reading it yeah no i i was gonna say i think this is like one time where um, the thing that Mio was saying earlier was, you know, um, there's some stories here that I, th- he thinks we lack context for. And that was a weak point for, for a lot of the stories. Yeah. Um, okay. but I think this is one of the very few stories where the lack of context actually helped us appreciate yeah, yeah. the story more. Yes, agree, right? agree. Yeah. Like it's that shock factor at the end that makes it so good. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the build up to it as well, like I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Well, now, re- re- even then, even if you reread it, the fact is, you really didn't know who he was before. So yes. that build up will still kind of affect you in the same way. Whereas I'm wondering how it might be for somebody who knew who Kelso was, uh, be- maybe because of history or whatever, or maybe they're English. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you read it. I wonder how that build up uh, might have been for them. Or how they find the story in general, I right? Because so. mm-hmm. I, I think like with the with the sense that if you go into it with that context already in your mind, that already informs you with certain expectations of how the mm-hmm. I guess the tenor of the story is going to be. Like I I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but like there I've seen certain people who will are they seem like allergic to like stories that have a historical bent. Because for them, it's going to feel like homework. Yes. Like, oh, okay, now I have to, yeah. you know, in, entrench myself in the seriousness of this story because it's yeah. something that mm-hmm. really exactly. happened. Um, really happened. But, like, as you know, like, for us, without that context, it's just like, oh, okay, wait, maybe this is real. Like, now now I'm, I'm like, I mean, yeah. there are things that invested us in his story, which, mm-hmm. like, yes. I guess, like, they were sort of banal things that, you don't really need like if you know the story but like for mm-hmm. us it it helped us to l- let that ending hit more mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. correct correct es- correct especially correct. because in the end you have the thing where the marxist is saying this is the thing that i felt like really affected me the most but what mm-hmm. what he was proclaiming at the funeral was don't you see that if you oh, refuse yes, to sure. enter into each other's stories if you ad- refuse to mm-hmm. admit a relation between you why then you have Capitalism hand, handed capitalism its finest victory. Sweet music it is to the foreman to hear that the blacks and the mm-hmm. poor whites and the Irish and the navvies and the skivvies have no relation to each other, that they can make no common cause. I was like, oh shit! Like that's what the story yeah. like got me to do right. was to see the relation between mm-hmm, myself right. and this guy who, when I started out, I didn't even think was real. Yeah, yeah, super gets. Correct. Damn. The story's great. The story's good. It's, I'm literally it, looking it's at It's really great. The... And it, it just yeah, it just hits so many themes as well. Mm-hmm. Like I, I just feel like she talks about so many different issues. I mean, other than race, she talks about class here. Yes. And yeah. yes. Uh, wala lang. It's it, to me it's just so interesting and amazing how she's able to weave all those things into this one small story. Na parang, yeah. Y- y- yeah. Is it yeah. like Max? Do you feel like um, uh, going back to you being like maybe she needs a better editor? Do you think the story is? Do you feel like it's like oh my god, kaya mo pala eh. Yeah, it's really that. You no, know, there are some yeah. stories here where you know when I was rereading them, because honestly, when I had to reread the book for this podcast, um, I was thinking, oh no, I'm gonna hate everything because that's what I remember is that yeah. I, I didn't like it. Yeah. Um, and then I read a few stories like. Um, Kelso deconstructed or 
the Miss Adele story. And I'm like, no, you know what? She's such a good writer. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. what? She's such a good writer. Yeah. Kaya naman niya. I, it, she just needs tighter editing. Or maybe mm-hmm. she she should have, um, I don't know, chosen different stories to put together. Yeah. Maybe it's also right. just that, that they just don't right. all match. I don't know. Right. And I think what yeah, that's despite that's it be, being called a grand union, right. which I know is supposed to be I a know. place, but like, yeah. but still, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that what added to that also was the fact that this was one of the stories that had never seen the light of day before this book. Because mm, like yes. some of the Mm-mm. stories that we mentioned earlier, like Miss Adele, um, or like Two Men Arrive in a Village even, those were some of the mm-hmm. stories that made it to print already. And so, yeah. like the stories that have not been published yet. Those are the ones that are not really tested. Yeah. And so there's like a, a right. the bigger chance of the hit and miss quality. And this one like hits like all the way. So hard. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. Yeah. Something right, interesting right. she does here yeah. also, I think, is she plays with temporality a lot. Like yeah. Yeah. you move back mm-hmm. and forth between like the actual historical setting and then all of a sudden there's like Bits of an email, yeah. which yun nga, I think she tried to yeah. do that in which, other parts, in other stories, and it didn't work. But here it yeah. worked so and well. It, yeah, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like this is the an- antithesis of that story I said earlier the the worksheet, the writing worksheet. Yeah, yeah. Where it doesn't mm-hmm. tell you anything about the people who are reading it, except that they're supposedly yeah. parents, and it's like, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who else? <laughs> Great. So, so, the story is good. So, so basically, we've it's a good story. the stories that we know were the kind of the best ones in this generally yeah. Keb's it's, yeah. <laughs> selection. It's, a, it's sort of funny because like, this is the story where I think it feels like we're a, a little speechless or like a little in awe of it. Uh, yes. But yeah. Because it's, the story it's hard to talk about it do for with itself. How... Yeah. It's so hard to talk about it because yeah. it's just so good. Yeah. You know, right. Like paraphrasing any of her points just won't do it justice. Exactly. So like if like, you're yeah. okay, I guess we can say now that this is the one we wreck the most. <laughs> I <laughs> yes, a hundred percent. I'm trying to remember yeah. <laughs> where I had read it or where I'd heard it. But there was a mm-hmm. writer who was saying that like the reason the reason that like or craft in stories and craft in in poems, part of what they're able to do is that you know it's good if they escape explanation. If the only way oh, to explain yes. the story is to read the story, which I think this story like that. really embodies so yeah. well. Like I, I, I super it's so love hard that. to be like, yeah, and then th- you end up like narrating the whole story. You end up reading the whole story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And she does that without also- having to turn the story into an essay, also. Yes, right. yeah. Yeah. correct. And then I feel like one of the reasons why then go connecting that to you saying that we're kind of speechless is because I feel like the three of us then don't wanna ruin it so much for people <laughs> who <laughs> might be the same yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. because it, guys yes. promise like exactly. you need to read this. If you're gonna read if, one if, story this year, exactly. this whole <laughs> if, if, if you're any, a grand if if union any at all <laughs> make <sighs> it Kelso deconstructed by Zadie Smith. Also, can I mention real quick that that last um, thing at the end, the all the world mm-hmm. is text. Yeah. Um, me, you, know, you know what this reminds me of? What? This reminds me of that Nora Ephron quote. That oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is copy. Yeah, yeah. That's yes, right. that's right. That's yes. why. Yeah. That's yeah. Why I, I was thinking I, that as well. Yeah. Because this is something oh, that on, that Nora made stands. that made it easy to Nora stands agree with <laughs> what you were saying earlier, Mags, about um mm-hmm. about for the king. Probably being a story that happened to her in real life, like oh, right. like it's, yes, it's yes. like these are stories where she Correct. just so very casually inserts herself, and we don't question yes. it because it, it, she makes yes. us feel welcome in it. Yes, that's so true. Right? Correct. Mm. Yeah. Come on. So and that's and so in that smart. same way, I felt like <laughs> the references to the writers in the Piccadilly line stations, mm-hmm. like that was her way of saying. These are the people who have been talking about what this story is about all along. Like this is these are the yeah. people who if you want more of this, these are the people who you'd go to. These are yes. the people who the story is in conversation with. Uh right. apart from the Russian story that she's reading at the uh, that um mm, that um Kelso's the... reading at the start, which yeah. also like in its own way is like a reflexive foreshadowing of 
what we as the readers will feel at the end because he's mm-hmm. trying to read it and he thought like he would enjoy the story because it was about the lawyer and then he realized yeah. like it's not really about the law but ever since i broke yeah. my thumb i kind of relate to it more <laughs> which right. you know like <laughs> it's sort of also kind of what happens to us at, at the end where Uh-oh. we're like we're not sure how much we're relating to it until the story at the end like pushes the idea like no, you have to you have to see that what you're feeling right now is connection. You are connecting with Kelso. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Such a good way to put it, Neil. Yeah. It's a Great. good story. Uh, it is it's so a good, good story. So good. It's a good story. Yeah, the lip prophet was just like freaking out. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many forms. <laughs> Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> what do I tell my students next? Like, you like, don't know Michelle Branch, but you'll know this. <laughs> the part where she. Like, oh also, my god. The part where she turned like the witness statement of the murderer into a poem. Oh my god! That yeah, was so, that was so good. good. Yes. <laughs> correct. Correct. So and good. I remember just being like, "Whoa!" And, and I remember she tried doing this in something else also. Yeah, I don't what know if was it was the other here one? or in. Or in NW or something like that, or in one of the novels. But I remember it not hitting as hard then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But here, it was super. I was like, Where, oh my yeah. God. And, and, and even to, then, she says shit. something interesting there because she's saying, like, just because it's a, uh, it has an aesthetic doesn't mean it necessarily adds to the beauty of what's going on. Because, oh. like, she says, like, yeah. the killer used words that were supposed to be names for Kelso, and they were all racial epithets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what they yeah. ended up representing was a malignancy in the brain of Patrick Digby. And I was yeah, like, fuck. Exactly. Like, again, like, the whole thing Damn. about philosophy of Damn. storytelling, like, it's all, like, oh, wrapped up so neatly and so chaotically it, yeah. in this story. Yeah. But in such a like clear like the chaos is very co- cohesive I guess yeah yeah exactly very yeah. Clear. It, it makes sense yeah yes it, yeah. it, it yes. makes sense to us I wonder if like if Chekhov would read this and then his brain would explode <laughs> like oh, yeah. he would <laughs> he would put more. off he would go off his own gun like he would be like this oh no, no. Oh. <laughs> sorry was that dark <laughs> too soon too soon sorry, um, sorry. <laughs> too soon <laughs> Uh, just a smidge too soon. A little, a little. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, the, the story is great, and that is it's as great. much as you can say about it. I, I, I know, it's, I'm it's, almost it's... like even trying to rack my brain, trying to figure out, like, is there something wrong with the story? Me too. I've literally been scrolling through my ebook of it, just yeah. being like, what did we not say about this? I mean, it's because, because well, it's, mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <friend. laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, what? you know, you know the feeling like <laughs> when you're, way. you know that feeling like when you're in an actual book club, and then like the discussion right. starts, and it's like, so how did we feel? And everyone's like, mm, and then we all like flip through our pages a little bit, like, mm, mm, and it's like two whole <laughs> minutes of silence before someone says, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. and there's still like a pause after. I think, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, okay, if there's something that I think is not actually, I think, I, I wouldn't know if it's like necessarily explicit or implicit in the text, but it's something mm-hmm. that I saw in an interview that she did with Marie Claire, where okay. this story, she said, was her way of processing her feelings in light of things that were happening that were similar to this in America and all over the world. Mm-hmm. And she was saying that, uh, it's hard for her to process those things in the present because they're so invested Mm -hmm. with her feelings and her emotions at the time being. Whereas like the thing that happened to Kelso, it's already an established fact. They know the circumstances of the murder Mm -hmm. and how the investigation rolled out. So it was something that at least as she was trying to dig into telling that story, she could exercise control over the, all of the circumstances and all of the factors instead of falling back mm-hmm. on her emotions, which she was hesitant to do uh, in, like, trying to assess what was happening in the present. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And I think that's, like, something that's interesting to consider, like, in the larger context of the story, which is not necessarily, I think, visible in the text itself. Mm-hmm. But it's, inter- it's an interesting way of looking at history as the way in which we can process what's happening to us now without mm-hmm. 
being carried away by our feelings. Like I think like that's something that's consistent yes. also with what we've yeah. seen with Zadie throughout these books. Yeah. Is that she's very unsentimental. Mm-hmm. And even yeah. if she is being sentimental, like she's very logical and cerebral about yes. it still. Right. Cerebral. That's actually the word I think. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the best way to describe her work. So Zadie. <laughs> That's so Zadie. That's Zadie, so we Zadie. did it. That's that is so Z- actually that's a phrase that we've also been. I feel like going through it when you find you know the stuff that she when you get used to her writing, I guess. Yeah, you could be like, mm-hmm. oh, that's that is so Zadie of you. Yeah, <laughs> to do Zadie. Um, yes. because I feel like even my my general thoughts of her, if we're doing general thoughts now, I yeah, guess, yeah, yeah. is go ahead. Um. That this was, despite it being kind of exhausting, as I have said multiple times, um, mm-hmm. it it was also very enlightening because she is true. I I cannot deny that she is she uh, is one of a kind, mm-hmm. um, in a, in mm-hmm. many ways, and um, even in the books that we or the works that we didn't necessarily like at all. You, the reasons for not liking them, I guess, kind of taught me something new in the end. Yeah. But in, mm-hmm. like, is it like, especially with Autograph Man, which was so, like, we just <laughs> had enough of Talaga. But in the end, I kind of was like, oh, I, I still learned stuff about, you know, um, uh, I guess about my own perceptions of like, um, mm-hmm. or like my own likings to writing, but then yeah. also about like what Zadie might have been going through at the time and like why she would mm-hmm. choose to put that out in that moment and or why a writer maybe in general would do that because I don't think I always think about those things um, mm-hmm. and I think it was a bold move of us to end this with short stories um, mm. because we've never covered short yeah. stories yeah. and crazy to think that I don't know would we do that again yeah Who's I mean like that's, that's the tricky thing um, I think that was the thing that <laughs> At least, like, if I'm thinking back to how we started off this episode, it was chaotic because we sudden, I, I mean, like, we suddenly realized, like, oh shit, we've never like talked about this kind of book before. We've yeah, been stuck in the exactly. novel mode for yeah. so long, for for months. Right. But now it's and, like, oh and, yeah, how do we read a short story collection again? R- r- right. Exactly. And then now we're going back to it. We. It's a good thing also that we we rearranged our ano. <laughs> Our, our, oh, you know um, what? Yeah, we would go through the, the outline. Of, yeah, 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 yeah. The outline of who started to go through first because we'd end on, on such a high note. Um, and I think also like uh, last point about this one. I think this is mm-hmm. like Kelso is such a. Well, I guess we said it already, but like this, this story is a, a, a great reflection of her best efforts. Yeah, the like, yeah, like when it's good, yeah. it's really gonna like fucking slam. And oh when she's yeah, mad, you're just like, oh dude, <laughs> why do you piss out? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like to tie this back to our first episode on Zadie, when we were reading White Teeth, I remember there were segments mm-hmm. of the middle of the novel where she tied in what was going through the characters' lives with historical events that were happening and unfolding you yeah. know, through the years. And it's right. it's funny to think about those scenes now in the context of Kelso, which is like now going to be our stopping point for Zadie, because <laughs> here she's able to invest that historical moment that is much less mm-hmm. known with like more emotion than I remember feeling with those incidents in White Teeth. Like, if ever I only felt... Yes. I only felt something in relation to the characters that I was already attached to at the time. Correct. Whereas, like, here, it was like, now I'm gonna introduce you to something that really happened. And, like, we're gonna mm-hmm. try to... Our objective is to make it... Make you, like, remember it. Make the story stay with you for mm-hmm. as long as it can. Exactly. And do something for you and hopefully change the way you behave in the world. Uh, if yeah. if this isn't something that occurred to you or something like that, right? Um, and and like, uh, I guess like looking back at it as well, like it's uh, it's interesting to look at the ways in which this is part of like we were saying earlier in the mini series that her early books represented like she 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 sort of self broke her bibliography into two sections one where she felt like she was writing them as a younger person and now where she was writing Mm -hmm. them with more maturity 
Uh, and, mm-hmm. and that period where she was writing it in her younger years, she felt like she could not really explain why she was writing what she was writing. She sort of said, like, this is the only thing I can write. I'm not sitting on top of anything. Um, yeah, and, like, what I write is what I write. So, you know, take it or leave it. Whereas here, it's like, there is now a better sense of control. Like, now I've been sitting on these, like, ideas for years now. And some incidents of my life, I can now recall with greater control that I can turn them now into stories. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, hearkening back to something that is said by the French poet in Kelso, Deconstructive, or sorry, not not the French poet, but, like, in the email, like, it still, <laughs> her attempt to try to make it feel like an honest narrative rather than a manipulation. Right. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Correct. So that's, uh, that's what I felt. And, uh, Mags, do, do you feel like revisiting the stories now in this book do you have a better like better opinion i guess or like rather like you look at it better than you previously did the first time you read it uh i wish i did Uh, (laughs) no but i mean after rereading the stories it, it was i don't know it became clear that the main problem i have with this collection is really the unevenness of it right. and the way that you know, some stories hit so hard and they're so strong, they're so good, but then the rest of it is either unmemorable or not very good at all. Um, yes. And the, the, the thing that's interesting also is that, and why I said I feel like I can be too forgiving of this author sometimes just because I love her, um, is that I have read her short stories prior to buying this book mm. and th- they were okay. Yeah. They, yeah. like... I read the Lazy River and I read the the Cambodian Embassy. Um and both of those were kind of just like, oh okay lang, sakto yeah, lang. But yeah. then when this came out, did I rush to get one of the first copies available here? Yeah, I did. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I played I myself yes. a little, but maybe I'm you grateful really had me in the first I didn't half so. <laughs> 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 Okay, I, I'm still going to ask this question, but I feel like I know where we all stand on this. Do you okay. think this book is required, recommended, or not required? Um, uh-huh. no. <laughs> Should we all say it on three? I would say... <laughs> Sorry, okay. okay. Oh, did you say no on three? <laughs> One. That's so mean! <laughs> A joke. I mean, not no. There's a reason we named that category. <laughs> I'm already preempting the answer, but anyway, sorry. What are you going to say, Mandy? Go, no, go ahead. You guys go first. No, I was just going to be like, oh, but we already said that we don't like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just generally... Yeah, no, I mean, like, okay. for me, because, like, if... And also knowing that some of the best ones that we picked weren't part of the previously published works elsewhere. Yeah. Parang, mm-hmm. I have no reason to kind of tell somebody to buy a whole collection. Right. Which... Yeah was very was so hit or miss that was the biggest story that like is the most worth it for us pa you can only find it in here right <laughs> yeah like if you're maybe if you're somebody who's like that like who would be willing to buy an anthology for one story <laughs> go ahead but like um i don't know i would not i personally would yeah mm-hmm. really recommend this that is sort of like the that. biggest risk i think of like assessing a short story collection versus a novel because at least Mm -hmm. in the novel we're thinking about one consistent story yeah the whole way through even like Mm -hmm. the nw had its own share of consistency even if it jumped from Mm -hmm. character to character but with grand union it really felt like going out of it i'm like I, i would only pick selected nuggets out of it to share with people but not the whole book in general and and in that way it sort of makes um short story writers or people who are who, writers who work, deal mostly with short story collections, they feel more like precision shooters. Mm. Whereas like right. novel writers are really more like, okay, let's see how long you can sustain this. They're endurance runners. It's endurance mm, yes. runners versus Come precision on. shooters. Mio, <laughs> oh. you out here with your sports Ooh, references. Sports? Yes, yeah, guys, again. Come on. The 2021 is the year I finally get into sports. I decided yesterday. 
<laughs> yes. Rooting for But you. Did you hear his Jordan reference in the last episode? Because it was exhausting. Yeah. This is, I'm oh hoping my God. that we can re- we can revisit it in like a year, uh, like a year from now, yeah. and Mio will and Mio will know exactly what he said this wrong. This is gonna be my character <laughs> yeah. arc for the next year. Is I want to see. time I failed to deploy a sports reference. And now moving mm-hmm. forward, I will watch every movie I can get my hands on about sports in an attempt to like sports. Mm-hmm. Um, grabe, grabe yung penitence so, for one yeah, wrong. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, maybe, maybe I really want to explore that side of myself. So uh, if, you, right. if you guys are on Letterboxd, uh, support my quest <laughs> yeah. to get into sports through watching films about sports. It's Recommend true, some... Uh, lists. Sports movies. Yeah, movies. guys, if you have sports r- movie recommendations, let us know. Super, that's how much we don't care for this yeah, <laughs> collection. Oh my god, god. Just I know, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. Yeah. Can I, uh, is it okay if I like read through some of the movies that I have so far on my watch list? Yes, no, oh, go ahead. Okay, movies, so take note, these are movies that I have not yet seen in full or in sequence. That's an important qualifier. But movies yes. that I plan to watch in my quest to like sports. Uh, so mm-hmm. Hoop Dreams, The Last Dance, Wimbledon, High School Musical. Sorry, Last Dance triggered me. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, High School I, Musical. I, I, no, I don't relate to that. It's not High School Musical good. <laughs> Now, High School Musical, that was a contentious one, as we know. Because yeah, I as we've talked about. Fragments of that movie. High School Musical 1 and 3. And 3. Those are movies that, that I at least one I've seen 89% of that movie and High School Musical 3 I have only seen clips but not I don't know what it's about uh, I don't know how I, I don't you know don't how you know do what that. it's about it's, it's called senior year do they become senior yes. citizens do you think it's do um, they get their senior card it doesn't look like that from the poster it's a movie about time <laughs> yeah actually this also is about you know temporal yeah. issues yes yes people being too bound by a place and some the, the script was by Zadie Smith yeah <laughs> it was it was <laughs> truly a millennial icon what else okay what else uh, is it? when I you watch Last Dance can I watch it with you yeah absolutely uh, I actually haven't I, haven't, I also haven't seen Bend It Like Beckham Bring It On Center you Stage haven't? Honey oh, White man can Money, job, yeah. Ali. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so th- it's a bunch. I, Million I a dollar baby. Oh, should, should I, that count? Yeah, that's true. No, I have not really seen that one. I know what happens. Yeah, in that I haven't movie, either. But I sorry, haven't. when you said Ali, it made me um, Ali. Yeah, Ali. Uh, y- oh, Ali. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Ali. I got it. Um, <laughs> I, sorry, I also want to like Ooh. indulge in like the qualifiers that I had for the sports movies that I picked Go on. because I I felt like pride in. Like the specificity of some of them. So the qualifiers for the movies that I picked was that there must be some element of competition. It cannot be a talent show or personality-based competition. So I excluded Scott Pilgrim, Sunday Beauty Queen, Slumdog Millionaire, or any movies that are about an election. The competition has to form mm-hmm. the heart of the conflict in the film, or at least build up to it in some way. So that excludes Forrest Gump and Big Lebowski. Um, and combat sports are allowed... As long as the sport was not originally envisioned to be fatal, so that excludes ah. Mortal Kombat, but I will accept <laughs> Balls of Fury because uh, ping pong right. was not. Oh wait, that, that sounds fair. Speaking, that's yeah, fair. Speaking of Balls of Fury, and also uh, yes, last night or the other night we were giving you some sports anime recommendations. Right. Um, what Blade of Glory? Oh, that's Ice another skating? one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. With oh, uh, yeah, John yeah, yeah. Heater. That's true. Yes, that's right. Yes. I better have that. I have not seen a movie at all. So you haven't? I will. It's great. I will watch it the Blades well. of Glory is the Talladega Nights of ice skating. <laughs> ice skating. <laughs> and it, <laughs> oh, which boy. is basically true because you know it's made by the same people. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Well. Anyway, guys, if you have any sports movie yeah. or anime or TV shows Shoot us a DM. that you want to recommend to us, yeah, let us know. Mio super love uh, Ted Lasso. I super so... love Ted Lasso. Yeah, I will put like my mm-hmm. sa- like Ted Lasso. The th- three bits of sports media that I have enjoyed in the last year: Ted Lasso, <laughs> loving basketball, <laughs> and um, loving basketball. Yes. Moneyball. That made me cry. Moneyball. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So there you go. So anyway, um, 
You guys want to do book rankings? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, book rankings. I, I guess. Last, let's, let's go, let's go. We're going to segue back. Max, as the guest, you may go first. Really? Oh, no. Oh, oh, no okay. <laughs> no, okay. Go last so, or, uh, for the book rankings, I, I can go first. It's fine. Okay. Um, but I just want to say that it was a bit hard for me to rank these books now just because... Um, it's been a while since I've read all of them. Okay. I mean, I just feel like it's a bit easier for you guys to be more objective about it just yeah. because kakabasa nyo lang lahat. Whereas yeah. for me, it's more like I remember how I felt while right. reading these books. Okay, okay. But mm-hmm. I don't exactly remember what happened. Okay. Um, That's fair. But yeah, okay. So I also want to say that yung middle, like, Two, three, and four are all so close together in in my head. I, yeah. Um. That that they could kind of like switch, switch places, positions. and I, I wouldn't mind. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I don't know how you guys are gonna feel about this, but my top one is actually White Teeth. Ooh. Okay. Um, and then I know you're not gonna agree that this is quite high, but my second one is Swing Time. Okay. Knew it. Okay. My 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 third is On Beauty. Okay. And mm-hmm. then there's NW mm-hmm. and then Grand Union. So okay. I haven't read Autograph Man. So yeah, yeah. So it's not there. How about you, Mandy? My number one is On Beauty. Mm-hmm. Number mm-hmm. two is NW because of that revelation that we had. <laughs> um, <laughs> number three, number three is White Teeth. Four Swing Time, and then I'm gonna have to put Grand Union and Autograph Man in the same. Oh, because they I share, can't think. They share, they share yeah, the because oh. I, parang, every time I thought about which I would reread less, parang I realized I equally would not reread any. Yeah. <laughs> either of them. So, um, <laughs> I put them. Yeah, okay. I, I have similar, like, I think we're all on the same or similar levels here because I'm looking at my rankings mm-hmm. now and I have similar entries to you guys. Um, but I agree with Max that I think two to four are can switch places and are interchangeable mm-hmm. because it's hard to think about the individual strengths and then have to compare them mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. other yeah. books because they're they're all good in their Correct. own unique way. So that feels like such a cop out. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I, I know. agree. <laughs> okay, so my, that being said, my number one is White Teeth. Uh, mm-hmm. My number nice. two is NW. Ooh. My number three, Swing Time. Ooh. Number four, On Beauty. Number five, Autograph Man. And number six, Grand Union. Oh, I'm so sorry, Grand Union. <laughs> no, but you know, it's like, it's, it's really, it's really because of the other stories. Like, it, as a cohesive yeah. piece, it's like, they just drag them out yeah, yeah. dead weight for the good stories. Uh, as a book, love. it's just not great. Yeah. 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 It's not grand, you would even well, say. It's more it's like a, just a union. They were not... It's, it's just a union. There was no unity. It was a union canal. <laughs> there was no unity. There was nothing grand. And this man did not autograph. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, that's, uh, that is Zadie Smith, everyone. That is Zadie Smith. We, we did, did it. it. We Woo! Uh, Zadie. I'm free. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh boy. I, I can't imagine reading all her stuff ng sunod sunod. Yeah. As much as I love her. Like, that's intense, guys. I mean, yeah. like, really setting herself to the two week deadline. I, I think that was like hardest yeah. with White Teeth, which is also why it became the most intense experience because we were like, experiencing <laughs> that both in ebook and audiobook. And it was like, yeah. oh, there's so much going on. It's so good. Like, I, I have to like really go through the weeds with this one. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So now it's like, and whew. then it, and then we became the meme by accident. Yeah, yeah. The Charlie <laughs> Day meme yeah. because Just we were so making all those connections. Everything, yeah. But yeah. it was fun. In retrospect, I did have fun despite the uh, yeah, no, absolutely the mental gymnastics of it all. And, and it and it but, made um, for I think more interesting a more interesting mini series than our previous ones. Which I mean, like not the this. <laughs> <laughs> Sally Rooney and, and uh, Madeline Miller but like at yeah, least there, there, there was like something that we could like there were a lot of complex talking points mm-hmm. that I think we never really got to hit 
as much with, with the, the previous authors. authors. Yeah. Well, and to be fair, also, a lot of that might have to do with how much she's put out compared to the right. Oh, that's right. true. Also, ladies that we have talked about, which I think will get um, interesting, especially since the two of them debuted. Yeah. Um, in the twenty, in the like mid two thousands yep, or the twenty tens ish, and then whereas you know Zay again debuted in like ninety nine. Yeah. So. And that's um, that's gonna be interesting because like Sally Rooney has announced her newest novel, and I yeah. feel like it, we have to be <laughs> which loyal. again, guys, has another yeah, we vacation. confirmed the European vacation. <laughs> but that's the thing. I think that's the challenge is that if we decide to do, I, I think we should do an episode on it. But like, when, I think we should. Do, yeah, when we get there, it's now figuring out like, can she break out of the tropes that she had set up in the first yes. two books? You know, which yeah. is not something that we see here at all with Zadie's uh, bibliography. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mio had a theory about Zadie having uh, patterns. Yeah, I tried to find patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, um, which, which I think are not inherently bad. Also, like I think mm-hmm. this, it's the same with Sally and yeah, her pattern of their at one point the characters need to go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and in and Europe, only but then in like, Europe. Yeah, only and only Europe. in Europe. From Strictly Ireland to Europe, Europe only. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, do you think they fly Aer Lingus? Who knows? Um, whereas with Zadie, um, even if she has that pattern, she still, it's like, I feel like she's more aware of it. Yeah. And she would be all mm. like, okay, I'm still gonna do this, but how do I keep it funky fresh? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like even when I was saying I that. that the odd numbered books have that similar pattern, like if you look at White Teeth, um, wait, I'm trying to count it in my head. White Teeth, NW, and sorry, White Teeth on Beauty and Swing Time. Those are like three mm-hmm. very different books. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And the three of them are. What were you the one who was saying, Miona Parang? If you had read NW. You would like not even know it's her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt that, that sounds like a radical not in, not departure, in a way, but like parang, from her earlier yes. books. But that's also what marked mm-hmm, the yeah, beginning exactly. of her second period, her her maturity yeah. period, as it were. Her her mature, Zadie two point oh, Zadie Mark two. So that is Zadie. That is Zadie. That is Zadie. Yeah. Thank you for having me. (laughs) Thank you to Max. Yes, for for being here for being our second (laughs) and last guest for this season. Yeah, for this mini series. Max, where can people find you online? Oh, um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram as Magsocampo. That it's not very exciting, but yeah, it's It's great. It is. You're so funny on online. That, that's all I have. Oh, thank you. Guys, if you're, if you're watching... Timbo, oh, um, Timbo right, right, right. Oh, yeah. So, um... Right, um, yeah, no, uh... something in my throat. Uh, it wasn't COVID. I hope you're okay, no, Neil, but... I'm not COVID-related, but... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind, I'd like to plug my son's Instagram account. Oh, Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, so, you can follow my very beautiful little cat... At Tembo Ching Ching on Instagram, he Call is the, the bad boy of Mandaluyong. Yeah, um, he he really is. Yes. he's asleep right now. Uh, but um, yeah, Mandaluyong. he's great. Okay, correct. Right, and um, <laughs> is there anything else that uh, we're supposed to be doing? I don't know, Mio. Don't uh, don't. Should we? Should we... What? Shouldn't we be What's announcing? Oh. An- is there an announcement to be made? An, an announcement? Wait, wait, wait. Announcement? Oh. But, but Mandy, it's March. It's March. What? It's almost it summer is time. School is out it for is. summer. <gasps> right? Then, as they said in High School Musical 2, what time is it? Summertime. That is the song summer I know. Time. That is the one song I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> right. But um summer is approaching and well, Mandy and I have decided to do something a little different for summer. Uh right. you might even say we were radicalized by the experience of reading oh. something other than the novel for once. And um Truly. well we've decided that our next mini series is not going to be focused on a single author. Instead, what we will be doing throughout the summer, if I'm not mistaken, we've projected from April to August. 
August-ish, yes. Uh, we will be doing different selections. We've each constructed our own reading lists. And we will be going through um, each entry in our own constructed reading lists for the summer. And that includes everything from movies to music albums to fanfic. Ooh. Songs. To short stories. What? Essays. Yeah. And also novels. More short as stories. Well. <gasps> so we've Whoa. got we've got a lot going on this summer. Uh, oh, and wild. It, it should we say I think they're um, wild and the benefit I think of doing shorter pieces this time <laughs> around is that over the summer we will be able to broadcast our show weekly. <gasps> oh yeah. So this Amazing. summer Rec Room is Schedule going change. weekly with our new set of episodes coming if I'm not mistaken, late April. But just to be sure, you can follow us on social media at the Rec Room Pod, Rec spelled R E Q nice on segue. Twitter and Instagram. We are also on Kofi. Just find us with the same handle, the Rec Room Pod. And that is how you will get the updates on um, what we are quote unquote reading next. And Ooh. also what our because I think what we agreed on is that we're not going to reveal outright the short form works that we're going to be reading or watching or listening to. But the ones that we'll be announcing ahead of time are the longer bodies of work, mm, like the novels, yes. so that people will be able to catch up on them before we get to those episodes. Correct. So yeah, stay tuned. Exciting um, stuff, guys. Stay tuned. That being said... uh. We will be taking a bit of a break for a while. Yes. So to starting uh, this, yes, to recharge. <laughs> uh, starting boy, this boy. episode, we're gonna be oh, taking uh, a bit of a. How long is it again, Mio? I think we're gonna be off for like I a think, month. Yeah, a month. We're gonna be off for a month, and then we'll come back next month with our have... first episode of the summer. Of, of funky the summer. fresh. Wait, and Mio, you didn't say that what, what we're lovingly calling it. What are next season calling? The, the summer the set. summer <laughs> yeah oh right we're the calling set. it the yeah. summer semester the summer semester so yeah get Aww. your reading lists ready cause we did yeah we did oh my god <laughs> we got a reading list ready. so we got a reading list we'll send you guys the a copy of the um uh what's it called the, s- our, the syllabus. Syllabus. our reading list <laughs> yeah our yeah our reading list so yeah thank you guys again for listening this entire first half of the rec room it's been so fun it's thanks so to good. our uh past and future guests jam pasqual for being with us on art and beauty thanks again to mags for thank being you, here today you. she is also past thank future you guest, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. thanks to tembo oh. for being oh. so good <laughs> while his mommy oh my was god doing yeah <laughs> <laughs> he only bit uh, me and once and um as Good on you, Thames. Ways. Good on you. And yeah. And as always. <laughs> yes, as always. High School Musical. Oh, God. Is the story <laughs> about. Thanks for listening to The Rec Room. This episode was edited by me. Our artwork is by Mandy. Our theme song is 64 Sundays by Twin Musicom, which is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution License. Check out more of their music at www.twinmusicom.org. For more updates on The Rec Room, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Rec Room Pod. Rec spelled R-E-Q.